it's a different way of looking at the rate of reaction. But remember, throughout this whole chapter, a rate of reaction is still you know, the change in concentration versus the cha change in time. But this is just a different way of looking at it. So if I want to come up with a basic rate law expression for a given reaction, so here we have A plus B is going to make C, I, I write down that the rate of reaction is equal to some constant K times the concentration of my, of my reactants. So this goes up, builds off the idea that rates of reactants are directly related to the concentration of my reactants. But here we have these exponents, M and N, which says that we really don't know how these reactants affect rate or if they even affect it at all. So there's this mystery factor here. Um, one of the most important things to point out when we talk about rate law expressions that these two exponents m and m we cannot get those by looking at a reaction equation. So it's not related to the stoichiometry or anything like that. We have to directly find these exponents m and n from doing an actual experiment. So it's not related to the reaction equation. I cannot find them from the reaction equation. So in the beginning, typically m, these exponents are typically whole, whole numbers, um, even 0, 1, and 2. And these are called reaction order. So we will talk about these more as we go along. We will talk about you know what uh, aspects uh, cause k to be large or small and you know what do we mean by reaction order but we just want to start out by finding out what these numbers are. So we use this term reaction order to describe how the reactants relate to the rate of reaction. So let's say in this case m was equal to 1 then we would say the reaction is first order with respect to our reactant A. If n say was 2 we would say the reaction order is second order with respect to B. And then we can look at the overall reaction order. So that is just the summation of the exponents inside of our rate law expression. So in this case, M was one, N was two. So the overall reaction order would be three in this case. But what do we mean by order? We'll get to that in a little bit. So K is the uh, what's called the rate constant. So this is different for each uh, reaction that you will uh, be running. And one of the things you want to understand is that as K increases, the rate also increases. So that is the idea. If you have a reaction with a large K, the reaction tends to go very quickly. A small K, the reaction goes relatively slowly. And the same idea, you know, what are some of the aspects of the chemical reaction that affects K? We will get into that. One of the other things you want to consider here is that the units on K changes with respect to M and N. So K changes as the overall reaction order changes. So if we look at our original rate law expression, we know rates of reaction need to be in molar per second. Our concentrations need to be in molarity. So depending on what M and N are, K needs to have a corresponding unit that will cause these molarities to turn into molar per second. So once again, we'll talk about that more here in just a second. So yeah, overall, the reaction order must be found experimentally. They cannot be found from uh, reaction stoichiometry. So how we actually do this is we do a series of experiments where the concentration of reactants are changed, and then we find the initial reaction rate. And from that information, we can find the exponents of our rate law expression. So that's the beauty of using initial reaction rates, is that even though the concentration of reactants are going to be changing, we go ahead and assume that the rate of reaction is going to be determined by the in initial concentration of reactants. So it's kind of like a trick, but allows us to get some good information and learn about our reaction and come up with our rate law expression. So here's a classic example of one of those questions. So I give you a reaction and what we want to do is come up with the rate law exponents for this reaction. So what is the overall order with respect to hydrogen? What's the overall order with respect to iodine? Once we get that information, then we can find our rate constant K. And once we have our rate constant K, we can 
then uh, extrapolate and say what would be the uh, initial rate of reaction if we change the concentrations of our reactants to some new uh, concentration. So you do these experiments, you change the concentration of reactants, and then using some method, you find the corresponding initial rate of reaction. So this is kind of a classic experiment uh, that you do in general chemistry. Um, so here, now that we have this information, how do I actually turn that into exponents and get the other pieces of information like the rate law expression? So what you do is you start with a basic rate law uh, expression. So you just say rate is equal to K times the concentration of reactants. And so our reactants were hydrogen and iodine raised to some exponent. We don't know what that exponent is. So you need to find or do a different calculation to find the exponent M and the exponent N. So here we're going to find M first. So M is related to hydrogen. So what you want to do is look at your experiment and find or your, your set of experiments and find two experiments where the concentration of H2 changes and the constant uh, concentration of iodine remains constant. So in this case, it is experiment three and one. So here, if we look uh, in experiment one and three, the concentration of hydrogen uh, initially was 0.1 and three was 0.2. But more importantly here, the concentration of iodine re remains the same. In reaction one, it's 0.1. In reaction three, it is also 0.1. And then also we get a corresponding rate that we have measured experimentally. So we want to take those two, and once again, this is kind of using a trick that if I set up a, a, a basic rate law expression for both of these experiments, and in this case, it's, it's kind of important that if you have a higher rate, so rate three was greater than rate one, you kind of want to put that on top. It just kind of makes the calculations a little bit easier. But if I look at this, I got to realize when I set it up as a division that K is constant. So the K on top and the K on the bottom are going to cancel out. And then also my concentration of iodine is exactly the same. So that's going to remain constant. So we're going to cancel that also. So this equation simplifies down that rate three divided by rate one is equal to the concentration of hydrogen experiment three divided by the concentration of uh, hydrogen experiment one, both raised to the exponent of N M. So if I plug these numbers in we, and actually do the calculation, you get that the relative ratio of the rates, so the rate in experiment three was uh, 16 times 10 to the minus fifth. The rate in experiment one was four times 10 to the minus fifth. One divided by the other gives me a ratio of four. And I do the same thing on the right-hand side. I divide the top by the bottom, I get two. But you gotta remember this is raised to some number m. So if I do this division, that exponent carries down. So sometimes if the problem is relatively simple, you can kind of look at the, the, the setup here and just kind of realize what m is. So two raised to the second power is equal four. So m is equal to two. Sometimes it doesn't turn out so nice and neat. So if you are unsure about what the number for m is, what you do is you go ahead, you take this equation, and you take the log of both sides. You take log of 4 is equal to log of 2 uh, raised to the power m. And when you do that, if you are taking the log of some number raised to some power, you can move that exponent to the outside of the log here. So log 2 to the m is equal to m times log 2. So if I take log 4 and divide it by log 2, like I've done here, that's equal to m, and if you actually do this calculation, you'll, you'll find log 4 divided by log 2 is equal to 2. So we know what our value for m is now. We do exactly the same thing to find n, which is the exponent related to i2. So we do the same thing. We go into our list of experiments. We find two experiments where the concentration of iodine changes and the concentration of hyd hydrogen remains the same. We set up our rate law expressions K cancels, and now the concentration of hydrogen cancels. We go ahead and plug these numbers in. I do the division, and now we see something a little bit different here. So even though we doubled our concentration, so going from experiment one to experiment two now, 
the concentration of iodine has been doubled, but my reaction rate has not changed. So what does that mean? In this case, it means that my reaction rate really is not determined by my concentration of reactant. The concentration of iodine does not have a direct effect on my reaction rate. So when we look at these ratios, so this number cancels down to one, this number cancels down to two, and then you say, well, looking at this, what must be the value for n? So anything raised, or any number raised to the power of zero is equal to one. So we can look at this and say that n is equal to one, and we'll find out here in just a second that zero order, it really means that, that the, the rate of reaction is not related to the concentration of one of the species. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, the rate of reaction doesn't have to be related to all of our concentrations. So now I have these exponents, I can come up with a better version of my rate law expression. So we, now we know the reaction is second order with respect to hydrogen, zeroth order with respect to iodine, and now we know what our overall reaction order is, which is the summation of all the exponents. So 2 plus, zero, uh, 2 plus 0 is equal to 2. So the overall reaction order is second. Now that we have these numbers, I can then use them to find uh, k for the reaction. So in this case, k is a constant. So it doesn't matter which numbers I use or which experiment I use. I can use my rate and my initial concentrations from any of the experiments. I'm just going to go with experiment one. So theoretically, you should get the same value of k if you use the, the numbers from experiment two or experiment three. So if I look at my rate law expression, k now is going to be equal to the rate divided by my concentration of my reactants raised to their corresponding uh, exponents. So if I plug those numbers in here, and remember 0.1 to the zero power, that just goes to one. Um, I get that my rate constant k is equal to 4.0 times 10 to minus third, and my units are one over molars per second. So the same idea that you need to remember that the units on k changes with the overall reaction order because I wanna make sure that my rate of reaction is in molar per second. So this is variable, so the rate I mean, the units on K are dependent on the overall reaction order, so they change. So in this case, we can use an equation here that the units on K is equal to one divided by molarity raised to the overall reaction order minus one times seconds. So here, our overall reaction order was two, two minus one is one, or for a second order reaction, the units on K are one over molar per second. Now that I have k, we can then use that to say what would be my initial rate with a different set of concentrations of our reactants. So here we say, you know, what's it going to be if my hydrogen is 0.05 molar and my iodine is 0.1 molar? So now that we know k, we can plug that in. We take our new uh, concentrations, remember to raise them to the power uh, or the exponent. And here when we crunch it down, we get a rate of uh, 1.0 times 10 to the minus fifth molar per second. So you can kind of see here um, that the units on K must be changed in order to turn molarity into molar per second. So let's take a second and say, really, what do we mean by overall reaction order? And we're gonna go into more detail with it. But for right now, what does it kind of conceptually mean to us? And rate law expressions tell us, you know, how do, the reaction constant, I mean, the reactant concentrations affect our overall rate of reaction. That's kind of what they're saying. So if I have this kind of generic rate law expression, rate is equal to K times the reactant A raised to the second power, B to the first power, C to the zero power, what does that really mean? So here, if I was to double my concentration A, what would happen to the rate? And so because my reactant is raised to the second power or, or it's second order with respect to the reaction, my rate of reaction would increase by four. So for right now, that's what we mean by second order. A change in a concentration of A is a course that has an effect on the overall rate raised to the second power. So same thing with B. So now if I was to double the concentration of B, my rate would have the, the same relationship, rate um, would actually double. If I double the concentration of B, my rate would actually double. And then C, C was zeroth order, that means 
that although I double the concentration of C, my rate does not change. So that is really what we mean by uh, zeroth order. So now that we've looked at that, kind of the next step, and this is a problem that we've been having so far, is we want to be able to find out how much reactant is going to be left at a given time t. So we're going to have to look at um, rates of reactions in a different manner.